The Ryzen 7 8700G now makes a whole lot more sense for gamers. So about a month ago at CES 2024, AMD announced the release of the latest generation of Ryzen 8000 series APUs with the likes of the Ryzen 5 8600G and the top of the line Ryzen 7 8700G. And that 8700G is pretty compelling. So for just $329, you're getting an eight core 16 thread CPU running on the four nanometer Zen 4 architecture with a 4.2 gigahertz base clock and a 5.1 gigahertz boost clock. It's a pretty compelling CPU just in and of itself. But then you throw in the fact that you're also getting a Radeon 780M GPU on board and it makes the thing even more compelling for just $329. And AMD used in its marketing material for this chip, the comparison to an Intel i5-13400F and an NVIDIA GTX 1650. So a discrete graphics card with the standard CPU. And that combination runs around $400. So $75 more than an 8700G, and the other thing that makes the 8700G such an interesting choice in terms of both a CPU and integrated graphics is the fact that it does have those eight cores and 16 threads of Zen 4. So you can always upgrade your system down the line. You decide to go with an 8700G today, you use it for a little bit with the integrated graphics, then maybe six months, a year, two years from now, you go out and purchase a discrete graphics card and improve the performance of your overall system but you still do have those eight cores and 16 threads. And the same can be said for the i5-13400F. You keep that CPU, you sell off the 1650, and you upgrade to a higher end GPU. But again, it's the, the fact that you're getting eight cores and 16 threads of Zen 4 with really, really compelling performance at a $329 price point today. So this is more about today's performance and less about the upgradability down the line, but you do get that opportunity to upgrade as well. But What's really interesting are these recent revelations about the overclocking capabilities of the 8700G and just how much performance uplift you can actually get out of this chip, get out of the 780M, and actually clearly beat out a 1650 or any other of those lower end discrete graphics cards with this APU. So in the story by WCCF Tech, uh, a YouTuber by the name of Scatterbench was able to overclock the 8700G uh, both the CPU, GPU, and memory to get the 780M up to nearly a 3100 megahertz frequency and outputting nearly 180 watts of power. And all of that resulted in a nearly 37% uplift in average performance throughout the testing suite and nearly a 61% improvement in a test like Fermark. So there's some crazy numbers and I, it's interesting to see how he was able to accomplish it. Now, in order to get a baseline of the 8700G's overall performance, the 780M ran at its stock configuration of 2880 MHz, pulling nearly 50 watts of power. Uh, and that resulted in some pretty good numbers, nearly 38 FPS in a game like Tomb Raider at 1080p. Nothing to scoff at considering it's an all-in-one APU but with some simple settings of just turning on Expo and running memory at its uh, rated uh, mega transfers per second of 6400, and then also enabling PBO2, Scatterbench was able to get a 15% average performance uplift in all of the testing, uh, which was really, really impressive for just enabling a couple of settings, just in the AMD overclocking menu, uh, while also seeing nearly a 10 FPS improvement in Tomb Raider at 1080p. So right off the bat, like simple settings changes on this chip, which is mainly tied to the fact that we're able to run the DDR5 at its max memory speed. And of course, considering it is an APU, it is using that system memory like it is video memory for uh, the 780M. So the higher clocks you're able to run on your system memory, the better the performance of this APU. And that's clearly seen here, 15% uplift by just enabling Expo and PBO2. And the next step was to finally tune the PBO2 settings to get an even higher uh, overclock on the 780M. So just enabling uh, PBO2 originally got the card up to around 2903 megahertz from the 2880. 
but by finely tuning PBO2, uh, Scatterbench was able to see nearly 3,100 uh, megahertz on the 780M in 3D Mark testing at nearly 80 watts of power draw. And then in OCCT, nearly 3,050 megahertz on the 780M and around 150 watts of power draw on the 780M. So pretty crazy numbers there. Uh, and that resulted in nearly 20% in, uh, in terms of average performance uplift in this testing suite, getting our uh, Tomb Raider test to a little bit higher to 49 FPS compared to 48 FPS. So again, some slight performance tuning there, maybe not crazy changes in FPS numbers, but overall in the rest of the test, we did see an average of another 5% performance improvement. And finally, the next couple of steps in the strategy were to kind of manually overclock the CPU and, and the GPU and the memory, uh, changing settings like FCLK, UCLK, and MCLK, which netted another couple percent average performance uplift, but nothing crazy. The biggest change came in the final part of the overclocking strategy, which was to run extremely high mega transfer per second memory. So then Scatterbench threw in some 7,800 mega transfer per second memory was the much tighter timings. And that allowed that 37% average performance uplift. And that's where we see this APU is directly tied in with the system memory. So the faster that system memory is able to run, the faster the APU and specifically the 780M is able to run as well. So with that 7,800 mega transfer per second memory, 37% on average performance uplift, got another 10% out of Tomb Raider at 1080p, now sitting at right around 60 FPS. So that is like the difference between gaming at 30 FPS and 60 FPS, just with a couple of overclocking settings and getting some really high transfer speed memory. Now, of course, going out to purchase a, a set of 7,800 mega transfer per second memory is gonna cost you a little bit more. It's gonna be closer to $190 for a set of like G-Skill memory uh, compared to probably $114 for something like 6,200 mega transfer per second uh, memory. So probably 60 extra dollars. And that's the difference between the going with a, an i5 and a 1650 and going with the 8700G. So you have that little bit of headroom to go out and purchase some slightly higher mega transfer per second memory, pair it with the 8700G, and you're going to get better performance than the likes of an off-the-shelf CPU and discrete graphics. So this is a super, super interesting uh, way to take the likes of an 8700G APU, overclock it, get really, really good performance for now, and then when you're ready to go out and purchase a discrete graphics card. So if the overclocking capabilities of the 8700G is what might turn you on to going with an APU uh, compared to going with discrete graphics today. I'd definitely be interested to see what you guys are thinking about this chip. Uh, so definitely leave all your comments down uh, below. If you enjoyed the video, definitely give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, get subscribed to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.